Now the topic for discussion is syphilis. Syphilis is one of the infectious conditions which has been prevalent in both developing and developed countries since two decades. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted disease which is a venereal infection in a highly contagious or infectious condition. It has, it has various systemic manifestations involving different organs and different systems of the body. Tripon Triponema pallidum, which is a spirochete, is responsible organism for causation of syphilis. Syphilis, the modes of transmission for syphilis is of various, various types and the primary mode of transmission is through sexual contact, that is, that is unprotected sexual contact and it can also be transmitted through vertical transmission, that is from mother to child during parturition and it also can be transmitted through a non-personal sexual contact, sorry, non-sexual personal contact which is nothing but direct uh, contact with the lesions which are highly infectious in various stages of syphilis. If untreated, this syphilis can be a potentially fatal condition too. The characteristic feature of syphilis is that it has periods of latency and exuber uh, exuberance in its uh, manifestation. Coming to the uh, organism that is causing syphilis, Triponema pallida, which is a spirochete, it is a motile and a spiral organism. This Triponema pallidum has various subspecies causing different uh, variants of syphilis also. The subspecies pallidum, that is Triponema pallidum pallidum, is responsible for venereal syphilis. Triponema pallidum perchune is responsible for yaws, and Triponema pallidum endemicum is responsible for endemic syphilis. Coming to the structure of Triponema pallidum, it has a cell body with trilamellar peptidoglycan cytoplasmic membrane and a lipid outer membrane. It has, for the motility of this organism, as, a, as already said, Triponema pallidum is a highly motile organism. It has a structure called endoflagella surrounding the outer membrane. This endoflagella helps in movement of this organism. And only known natural host for spirochete Triponema pallidum is man. Coming to the pathophysiology, these spirochetes usually enter the human body through any breach or break in the mucosa or epithelium of the skin. Within few hours, these organisms disseminate through the bloodstream and through the lymphatics and then the primary lesion is usually seen at the site of the contact. Later, these organisms undergo a period of latency and they manifest a late or secondary reactions within the body. The incubation period of syphilis, that is the Triponema pallidum, is usually 14 to 28 days and in extreme cases it can usually occur from 9 to 90 days. After the primary lesion, which usually heals in 6 weeks, a secondary, secondary stage of syphilis develops. Sometimes, patient can undergo into a latent phase where he, is usually, he or she is usually asymptomatic and in this particular phase, the, uh, after the period of latency, other manifestations can also occur. These clinical stages are usually of 4 stages, early stages and late stages. In early stage, we have primary syphilis and secondary syphilis and in the late stages, we have tertiary syphilis and quaternary syphilis. Other stages which are usually seen are latent syphilis and congenital syphilis. Coming to the primary syphilis, this primary syphilis as already said usually occurs at the site of inoculation. This can be at the glands of penis, it can be with the oral cavity, at the cervix or at the labia. The, the characteristic feature or a pathognomic feature of primary syphilis is Shankers. These shankers are nothing but flat, usually red in color, papular lesions which are firm in consistency. These are usually painless and but they have an indurated border and they secrete certain serous fluid. This is highly infectious. These shankers usually uh, can in the later stages can become more indurated and but these can be, uh, these shankers are usually heal, uh, they heal spontaneously in about 3 to 8 weeks. Patients in primary syphilis condition, they are usually febrile and they have a typical symmetrical rashes all over the body. About 60% of the patients in primary syphilis also have oral manifestations that is usually shankers. These shankers occur on lips, on the tongue, gingiva and on the tonsillar areas. These intraoral shankers are usually slightly painful. Before, uh, initially, these shankers usually are painless, but intraoral, in intraoral sites, they can be painful due to secondary bacterial infections. And patients also manifest with enlarged lymph nodes, that is nothing but lymphadenopathy. In 3 to 8 weeks, this primary syphilis heals, and sometimes a patient enters into a second stage, that is nothing but secondary syphilis. 
In secondary syphilis, about 30% of patients, that is one third of the patients, may still retain the chancre, that is the primary lesion. And, but other, other manifestations in secondary syphilis include skin lesions, mucosal lesions and lymphadenopathy. Patients exhibit typical influenza-like symptoms and the lesions are maculopapular and nodular mucocutaneous lesions. In secondary syphilis, they have characteristic mucus patches. These mucus patches are nothing but red, pain, usually painless, erosive-like lesions which, which take different form like snail track ulcers or serpentinous ulcers. The name snail track ulcers is given to it because the path or the uh, appearance of the lesion is usually as the snail track is present or as a serpent is present like a snake form. Hence they are called as snail track ulcers or serpentinous ulcers. Another feature which is a pathognomic of secondary syphilis is condyloma lata. Condyloma lata is nothing but a broad based varicose plague like lesion which is present in the oral cavity or at the site of inoculation. Patients usually manifest with sore throat, fever, malice. They have generalized lymphadenopathy. Meninges meningismus can also be seen. Other conditions which, uh, which are usually manifested in secondary syphilis stage are arthritis, periostitis, hepatitis, optic neuritis. Patient will also have GIT in involvement and kidneys can also be affected leading to glomerulonephritis. Oral manifestations in case of secondary syphilis is Mucus patches and snail track ulcers are also present in the oral cavity. The primary site of these snail track ulcers are usually the palate or the buccal mucosa. Lesions also involve the pharynx and larynx leading to hoarseness in the voice. The maculopapular lash, rash is usually confined to the palate. Coming to the tertiary syphilis. In tertiary syphilis, it is also called as gammatous syphilis or late syphilis. In this condition, there is a pathognomic feature called as gamma. And this gamma can be either mucocutaneous, or that is either in the cutaneous region or in the mucous membrane region. It usually begins as a painless nodule. And to remember, gamma is non-infectious. It only manifests because of a delayed hypersensitivity reaction to the uh, spirochete. As it begins as a painless nodule, it breaks out and it into a punched out lesion. To remember, the ulcer form of syphilis has a characteristic edge and border which is nothing but punched out ulcers. They also have a wash leather base and it heals with a scar. Coming to this mucosal gamma, it is most commonly seen in the oropharynx region. It can lead into perforations that is because of endarthritis obliterans, a condition of the uh, of gamma, there will be a perforation of heart palate or nasal septum. This gammatous lesion usually coalesce and they ulcerate leading to bone destruction this bone destruction, if it is occurring in the palatal region, can lead to palatal perforation, creating an oro, uh, oronasal fistula. If it occurs at the nasal septum, it can also cause a septal perforation of the nose. Intraosseous gammas are also seen in case of tertiary syphilis. Now, oral manifestations, other oral manifestations include syphilitic osteomyelitis. It can most commonly, mandible is involved than maxilla. And it also has another condition called as interstitial glossitis or lutic glossitis which is usually affecting the tongue. This is a potentially malignant lesion which has high pro presence to convert into a malignancy. The gammatous lesions are usually uh, uh, seen in the case of midline of the palate which are usually non painless and non-infectious. Coming to the final stage that is late stage of quaternary syphilis, it involves multiple system. The manifestations of this late syphilis can be uh, cardiovascular uh, uh, affecting the liver which condition uh, leading to hyperlobatum, cardiovascular syphilis, it can also lead to neurosyphilis and these conditions are uh, potentially fatal if untreated. The final sometimes uh, as the mode of transmission is also includes vertical transmission, if a mother infected with syphilis gives birth, gives birth to a child and at that time there can be a condition called as congenital syphilis. In this congenital syphilis, usually the child, uh, the manifestations occur at less than two years of age and the fetus is infected during the second or third trimester. It manifests either as an early congenital syphilis or late congenital syphilis. In early congenital syphilis, the conditions include frontal bossing, saddle nose. Saddle nose is depressed nasal bridge and poorly developed maxilla. In late infection, there is a Pathognomic feature called as Hutchinson's triad, where there will be mulberry molars, screw-shaped incisors, interstitial keratitis, and deafness. 
Patients can also develop arthritis in these conditions. Rickets is another pathognomic feature where there will be vertical lines emanating from the corner of the lips. And you have say, patients will have saber shins or cluttons joint where the joints will be bow shaped. Coming to the diagnosis of the syphilis, most commonly it is through clinical symptoms, history and further confirmatory we have various diagnostic method, methods such as immunofluorescence staining of mucocutaneous lesion, dark field microscopy. As Tiponema pallidum is a motile organism, it has to be seen under uh, below the resolution of light microscopy which is called as dark, face, dark field or face contrast illumination microscopy. Coming to the serological test of uh, Triponema pallidum, there are two types that is specific Triponema pallidum and non-specific Triponema pallidum test. In non-specific Triponema pallidum test, here they check for lipoidal or cardiolipin antigenic antigen and the test include rapid plasma regain test or VDRL test. In a specific anti-triponemal test, which includes FTA-ABS test, triponema pallidum heme agglutination test or enzyme immunoassays. Coming to the management, the first line of drug is penicillin G. It is the first line of drug for syphilis. In case of primary and early, early syphilis, that is primary and secondary syphilis, about 2.4 milli, uh, million units of uh, uh, penicillin G uh, as a single dose IM can be sufficient. In case of tertiary and quaternary syphilis that is in severe stages 2.4 million units of penicillin G IM has to be given for about 3 weeks. If at all the patient is allergic to penicillin, doxycycline or tetracycline can be given. Tetracycline a dose of 500 milligrams uh, 4 times daily and doxycycline about 100 milligrams 2 times daily for 2 weeks. In case of tertiary or quaternary syphilis, tetracycline 500 milligrams 4 times has to be given for 4 weeks and doxycycline or doxycycline 100 milligrams has to be given 2 times daily for 4 weeks. Overall, apart from the management, prevention also plays an important role in, uh, preventive measures also play an important role in prevention of syphilis. And certain measures have to be taken to prevent the spread of syphilis which includes safe sexual practices, safe blood transfusion methods and also uh, isolation of the patient who is suffering from primary and secondary syphilis as lesions at this stage are highly infectious. Thank you.